Hey folks, Matt from Art of the Image. I'm going to do an HDR, another hyper real HDR high dynamic range photo, this time from a Canon 60D. We're going to use three images of a clock tower I have here. And um, basically, this is uh, one image that I've done some adjustment uh, plus exposure and negative exposure to with copies um, because I didn't shoot this uh, in various exposures for HDR at the time. So that's the beauty of RAW that we've got uh, a couple copies of the RAW files here and uh, one at about a stop down and one about a stop above. So we went to uh, merged HDR Pro here. We're going to wait for it to open them up. It takes them on to a separate layer and then merges them into HDR Pro where we can do some editing. And here we have the image here. I'm going to go down to my saved defaults and then we're going to play with these a bit. Um, my defaults here, I have the radius at, on the edge glow at 180 px, PX pixels and uh, 0.4 on strength. And then we're going to come up here and the gamma I think might be a little high at 50 there. So that actually looks better there, I think. Maybe maybe 60, actually. Okay, we're going to go to 0.55 is where we're going to end up with there. We've got the detail at 300%. You can see that that gives us our, our surreal look, our hyper real. It's popping it up there. And uh, I've got Vibrant set at 100. And we'll have a quick look here and just see if that needs to be changed. I think I like it at 100. Saturation at 50. Let's try it at 35. I'm going to put that at 35. And now we're going to hit OK. And it's going to take us into a HDR file. It's going to merge all of those into HDR using HDR Pro. This is Photoshop CS5. And it's creating the file right now. And uh, we'll just close the mini bridge as soon as I've got that file open. We've got the progress bar there, converting HDR image. I like to do this in real time just so you folks can see how fast it goes. I've got a few other applications open on my computer right now too. Here we go, and there is the image. So the first thing I do is I save this, and we want to put this uh, exactly where we want it. So we're going to put it in the uh, pictures library. I've got a, a, a setting here. I'm going to call this, I already have a clock tower. Uh, tower clock folder. I'm going to do another one just to make sure I know what this is. So tower clock one and then we're going to click open. I'm going to call this tower clock so I know what it is. I'm going to save it as a PSD for maximum editability. I don't know if that's a word. Editability. Maximum ability to edit. And then we're going to close that out and reopen it in RAW. Okay, so we're reopening it in RAW. So we go to open as we choose our PSD. Then we want to come down and make sure you've got camera raw selected because what that's going to do is allow us to use all of our camera raw edits here in the uh, PSD file. And since it's PSD, very close to the information we would have in the raw files. So we're going to play around with this here. I'm going to hit the recovery up on this and uh, I'm going to crank some fill light into here. I'm going to go to 25. I'm going to pull up the blacks here. Get some punchiness back after the fill light. I'm going to go to 20 on the blacks, it looks like, for now. And we're going to come up to 35 on the brightness. And uh, what we may actually do here is back off the exposure to a, ha to a full stop down. So negative a stop. And now I'm going to pull that back with my brightness to... Let's see here... I like that right about there. So plus 90. We do have a few blown highlights, as you can see, but it works with the image the way we've got the clarity and the and the uh, the tonal range on this is cranked right up for contrast. Very hyper real effect. I'm going to bring the clarity up here to 25. We already had a fair bit from the initial HDR image. And vibrance, I'm going to bring that up too to 40. It looks good there. And I don't know if I want the saturation up or not. It might be a little too overcooked. But uh, since we're going hyper real, we're going to do it up a bit here. So I'm going to take the saturation to 25. And it looks like I need some more blacks in here just looking at this. So I'm going to pull my blacks up to 25 as well. And that looks pretty good right there. So now I'm going to click open image. There's our open image from HDR Pro. It's going to make a couple uh, 
couple little additions to this. I'm going to go and create a layer, copy layer. So that's Control J creates a, a copy layer. And um, I'm going to go into Blur, Gaussian Blur. I'm going to go to 30 on the pixels. And then I'm going to click OK. And then we're going to come back and drag the opacity down to about 25 and have a look how that looks. Gives it a little bit of that ethereal look, that ghostly look that you get um, from Photomatics. So I like that there. And then the one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go Control J again on my background layer. And I'm going to come down. I'm going to go to Other under Filters. And I'm going to hit I High Pass. I'm going to drag this back to where right at gray. And then I'm going to come up to, looks like about two. You just want to start to see the color. And uh, I'm going to change the blend mode on here to hard light. And there we can see what that's done there. And uh, actually, I kind of like it without the, um, the Gaussian blur on this one. So I'm going to leave the Gaussian blur off. You can see I've turned that layer off. And now I'm going to save this, save as. And we're going to go to JPEG, Tower Clock JPEG, save, level 10, because that's all I need as a JPEG and click OK. And there you go folks, there is my tower clock HDR image. You can see the neat look of the snowflakes falling here um, throughout the image, a little white speckling, that's actually snow. I shot this while it was uh, snowing outside. This is with the 60D and the Sigma 120 to 400 millimeter OS. And uh, so I'll put this image at the end for you to have a look at the final image, as well as the uh, three initial images we used to uh, merge for HDR Pro. Thanks for tuning in, folks. Stay tuned. We'll be back soon with some more video posts, some more articles, and we'll keep you up to date with what's going on in the world of photography. Thanks a lot.